I'll now be detailing the specific supplements that have shown to be effective for anxiety in the clinical studies performed to date. I'll also be detailing some of the nutritional deficiencies that are associated with anxiety, which may often exacerbate the state. There are many supplements that I have researched which have not been expanded on here. Now, these are omega-3 fatty acids, L-theanine, probiotics, valerian root, St. John's wort, chamomile, glycine, rhodiola rosea, GABA, inositol, and kava. Each of these are not without their own merits, and some of which have shown to demonstrate efficacy in other emotional disturbances and mental health disorders. However, their utility for anxiety is currently limited. Without further ado, the following is a list of supplements and potential nutritional deficiencies that are useful to consider when addressing anxiety. First, magnesium. This trace element, being a cofactor to over 300 enzymes in our body, is not surprisingly implicated in a wide array of disorders anxiety being one of them. Evidence is relatively small, but general findings from case histories and preclinical studies have found strong associations between magnesium deficiencies and both trait and state anxiety, as well as improvements in these symptoms after supplementation. Next, and I'm going to group these together, these are the vitamin Bs, so specifically vitamin B6, B9 and B12, vitamin D and zinc. My inclusion of these here is less as a result of the clinical studies to date, but because the deficiencies in levels of these vitamins and trace elements are common and more common for those with anxiety related disorders. A supplementation of these, especially if deficient, will go a long way to further maximizing well-being and generally indicated for overall health for those not receiving adequate amounts of these elements and vitamins in their diet. Next, ashwagandha. Evidence from clinical studies generally supports the use of this in alleviating both anxiety and stress. Now for anxiety, the use of ashwagandha at doses of around 600 milligrams a day was shown to be the most effective. And for stress, individuals can get away with slightly lower doses to reap the benefits shown in these studies to date. Next, saffron. As a supplement, this has traditionally been used for muscle cramps and asthma. Two small studies to date demonstrate its efficacy in relieving symptoms, however, for anxiety, uh, both taken on its own and taken alongside a typical antidepressant. Next, passion flower. The benefits demonstrated by passion flower supplementation in studies to date, well, it's very encouraging. However, the evidence regarding guideline dosing and feasibility of long-term use still remains inconclusive. Additionally, the understanding of its potentially inactive ingredients remains slightly ambiguous. Therefore, further research is needed to fully comprehend its potential effects. However, what we do know is that passion flower in either droplet or tablet form demonstrates marked symptom reductions in anxiety comparable to some benzodiazepines, which should typically be avoided and only used when necessary due to their addictive properties and long-term side effects. The doses used in studies typically ranged from 400 to 800 milligrams daily, with larger doses divided into two or three smaller doses, rather than being taken all at once. More information is needed to recommend this with certainty, but the results so far have been very encouraging. Next, CBD. I've included CBD in this list as it's subject to a lot of talk, driven primarily by the case reports on its effect on anxiety. Most recent studies are mixed on this, with the majority of studies showing a modest improvement in reported anxiety with CBD in comparison to the placebo. I understand that CBD is the subject of extensive ongoing research, so I'm confident that our understanding of it will soon become much clearer. Next, lavender. So studies to date investigating the effects of lavender on anxiety have been promising. However, much of the information on lavender is dubious due to its potential biases. Since the scent of lavender is easily recognizable, it's difficult to create a reliable placebo to compare it to. Regardless, inhalation of lavender during aromatherapy sessions has consistently demonstrated a reduction in symptoms of anxiety. Not only this, but a controlled study investigating the benefits of lavender oil via capsules containing both 80mg and 160mg daily were both superior to placebo in reducing states of anxiety, stress and installing a sense of calmness. Given the fact that there is a minimal side effect profile and the nature of the fact that there are no withdrawals, this seems to be a viable option, despite the need for more well-regulated research to further ascertain guidelines for its use. Next, L-lysine and L-arginine. To date, these supplements have only been studied in controlled trials when used in combination. Both of which, however, have shown to reduce both state and trait anxiety levels and demonstrated a reduction in salivary cortisol after a course of taking these supplements when compared to the placebo group. Although there are only two studies to reference, it's fair to say that the findings are promising at this point. 
That concludes our discussion on nutritional deficiencies and supplements for anxiety. It's important to note that this is not a blanket recommendation for everyone. As with any supplement or medication, it's always crucial to consult with the appropriate clinician before considering starting any of these. Anyway, I hope this has been of some help. And as always, please feel free to reach out to myself if you have any questions regarding the information covered.